You got women that came out and said Russell Simmons was doing stuff like that. But Russell Simmons said, I wasn't doing that because of- Showed up and tackled me to his bed while I screamed and fought and cried. You said I, you had more foursomes. Most men have partners. <laughs> yeah. Two Hollywood veterans, Tisha Campbell and Lisa Ray, developed an odd bond. Because of this, Tisha publicly criticized Lisa and cautioned her friend from seeing the serial killer in Russell following recent allegations that Lisa is covertly dating Russell Simmons. We are here to tell you, for the first time ever, Russell Simmons is dating someone else. There are rumors that Russell, 66, and his longtime friend Lisa Ray McCoy, 58, are dating. Though it's the first mature girlfriend Russell has had in a while. Lisa's buddy, Tisha Campbell, is understandably unhappy in the relationship. To meet her new boyfriend, Lisa Ray journeyed to Bali, the Asian paradise where Russell currently resides. In December 2023, Simmons said that he had passed nine lie detector tests after 18 women accused him of sexually abusing them. I didn't take the test. People are not conscious of that. Nine unique. The music industry executive said that he has been crude and in awkward situations in the past during his appearance on the most recent episode of In Depth with Graham Benzinger but he continues to refute any allegations of violence against him. In the course of the conversation, he revealed that he had been subjected to multiple polygraph tests in response to allegations of sexually inappropriate behavior made by more than a dozen women, including R, I finished nine line tests. According to Simmons, who was first charged with misbehavior in 2017, not many people are aware of that. Nine unique, one for each significant accusation, including seven from the Polygraph Association chairman. The businessman informed Benzinger that he performed one test for each violent charge or for any claim he thought would be supported by the claims made by several accusers. I've never said I'm sorry for hitting someone, he clarified, adding that when someone said, for example, I was violent, they took it to mean that he had never been violent. I took a test for it. He said in response to someone else saying, I apologized. He said, Two polygraph examiners, one who says I've never done this to anyone and one who says I've never done this to each individual. Three hours per test. Some people say they're not accurate, but it's 94% accurate," Simmons continued. I finished nine of them by myself. It's quite evident that I have trouble believing it. Even though it wasn't real, I wondered what would happen if I believed it. He warned you that your subconscious will get you. That was said to me by the chairman of the Polygraph Association, although I'm not sure if it's true. After acknowledging that there was film of the polygraph test, the co-founder of Def Jam Recordings clarified that this was because of a narrative that suggested we wanted to believe women and we didn't want to regress. But women and celebrities might be a little different in some cases, the entertainment mogul continued. But we can't choose not to trust women, we have to believe them. We cannot defame someone in the lack of proof, even though we must give them the benefit of the doubt. Simmons also talked about the reasons he thinks it's important to identify very gray regions and the chance that his recollection of an incident would not match someone else's with the in-depth post. I can only speculate that I was involved in a great deal of risky situations that other people may recall from 30 or 40 years ago. Their recollection may even include cooperation, which is different from mine, he said. Furthermore, he asked several questions. If you had more foursomes than most men at one time, could someone get offended about it? Can someone leave and then come to regret it? Can one person among thousands of others change a narrative? In a market where people are eager for reputation, even the terrible type, would anyone want notoriety? Is it feasible that someone who was just released from prison would want to sue you because they believed something different about what happened? And would you be willing to take it if you were open to receiving it? Given that 18 women have come out with charges against Simmons since 2017, Tisha is worried for Lisa. These claims cover anything from improper conduct at work to an attempted attack in a women's restroom following a wild night of partying at R's apartment. The hip-hop mogul quit from every role in his Def Jam label soon after, following widespread reports of his aggressive and harassing conduct. In 2020, the record-related documentary made its max divot. It recounts the experiences of several of the ladies who opposed the hip-hop mogul. In a statement to People magazine, Simmons vigorously disputes every allegation, asserting that all of his relationships have been consenting and that the horrifying accusations have shocked me to my core. He said in a statement, I am blessed to have shared extraordinary relationships with many great women, whether through work or love, 
as well as I have a great deal of respect for the global women's movement and their struggle for equality, respect, dignity, and power. I'm devastated that I may have provided someone with a justification to think or talk about me in the ways that are currently being said. I strongly disagree with the concerns made by a few former creative, business, and romantic partners in the past few weeks. In numerous of these situations, the media has been given financial incentives and directly contradictory witness testimony. Yet these details have never been mentioned in the reports. In the preceding several days, one woman made an attempt to extort me for $500,000, but she eventually withdrew her ridiculous demand. The charges I have been subjected to lately by the New York Times and Los Angeles Times range from the obviously untrue to the petty and harsh, maintaining the principle that one is innocent until and unless proven guilty. It cannot be replaced by admissions of wrongdoing. He continues with the claim. He concluded that I had already expressed remorse for my reckless moments in my consenting relationships. I have always been honest about how I have lived, even though I have been upfront about my failings in books and interviews. I will do all in my power to refute any unfounded allegations that depict me as a violent man. But which particular women have charged the millionaire with misconduct? According to The Blast, aspiring filmmaker Jennifer Jurisic sued the music mogul for $5 million in 2016, alleging that Simmons had paid her a visit at her residence. In May 2011, I traveled to New York City to conduct an interview with him for my documentary, which is presently showing in theaters. When Jarosik was visiting New York City in 2006, she allegedly ran into Simmons and he agreed to co-produce, finance and support a documentary she was working on promoting women's empowerment. She claims that in 2016, after moving to Los Angeles, she got an invitation to Simmons' Beverly Hills home. The Blast claims that when Simmons arrived, she asked whether they may have S, he claimed that he grew hostile when she denied his request. The article claims that Simmons assaulted the woman after forcing her into the bed and then ordered her. The next person in line is Jane Doe One. The Hollywood Reporter states that a lady who wishes to remain anonymous filed a $10 million lawsuit against Simmons, claiming that he caused her emotional pain and R. The lawsuit against the music producer states that the mother accompanied her son to a rap and hip-hop event after accepting Simmons' invitation to an after-party at his hotel, as reported by the magazine. The woman there introduces herself as Simmons and takes her to his hotel room. When Hines was either 17 or 18, she says she was restrained by Simmons on his couch inside his office. I tried to resist, but he overcame me and got what I desired. I left crying, she told the newspaper. The same year, Hines supposedly told a friend about the alleged encounter and confided in her sister. Ron is a wealthy businessman with whom Shelley Shell, the protagonist of her 2008 book Mercedes Ladies, had a similar interaction. Lisa Kirk is the next person to speak. The story claims that in 1988, Kirk and Simmons were hosting parties at Carmelita's New York City reception area. She said that he followed her into the restroom and tore her clothes after pushing her into a stall, according to an interview she gave to the Los Angeles Times. When Simmons began to take his urinal out of his pants, Kirk told the source he literally ran out of the bathroom. She claims that she didn't tell two friends about the alleged incident until recently, years after she had erased the memory. Here's Tony Sally, another alleged victim. The black radio exclusive reporter told the New York Times that she had first met Simmons when working on a project, and that after a few dates, she decided they were not a good fit. Then, in 1988, she got an invitation to a party in Simmons' Manhattan apartment, honoring his then-girlfriend. Among the victims who came in accusing the music entrepreneur were Tina Baker, Carrie Closencology, Jenny Lumet, Drew Dixon, Natasha Williams Block, Aaron Beatty, Christina Moore, Amanda Seals, Karen Russell, Kelly Catrone, Celay Abrams, and Alexa Norton Jones. Russell's public animosity toward her ex wife, Kimora Lee Simmons, endures despite their acrimonious divorce. The same goes for Lisa Ray, who also had a furious disagreement with Keiko's last prime minister, Michael Misick. Known for voicing her opinions, the Players Club actress recently admitted to the public that she still holds grudges toward Dwayne Martin, her co-star on All of Us and Lisa's friend Tisha Campbell's ex-husband. Lisa accuses Martin of encouraging her husband's extramarital affairs, which caused their marriage to end. When the fairy tale marriage ended, she felt betrayed and lost a friend. In an earlier TV One program, Lisa expressed her belief that Martin played a role in her marriage's disintegration. That was one of the worst things I could have ever done when I introduced them, Michael Misick and Dwayne Martin," 
she said in the uncut version. During that relationship, I lost my spouse to Dwayne Martin, and for some reason, they grew closer than my husband and I did. For God's sake, I could not even begin to understand it. She continued by saying that he began to behave disrespectfully by introducing my husband to women except the ones we knew. Given that Russell Simmons has grievances against 18 people in addition to his ex-wife Kimora, it seems sense to believe that Tisha doesn't want her friend to go through the same pain again. Do you think Lisa Ray should pursue her new romance further? Thanks for watching our video, don't forget to like and comments also subscribe our channel for more videos.